Hey guys, Bob Morreale here with the Tuning School, and on today's Tech Tuesday, we're starting off a brand new series. It's called All About Forced Induction. Stay with us while we go through it. All right, welcome back. Uh, in this series, we're going to be discussing everything about forced induction, starting with the overview of what forced induction is, proceeding there from how to pick the right forced induction system for you, and then we're going to get into the details of how to pick the right turbocharger for you and your application, supercharger, intercooler, piping, all those details that most of the time just get glossed right over and you end up with the result of something you're not quite happy with. All right, so looking at the overview of the system as a whole, the primary components of a good force induction system are your turbo or your supercharger, your intercooler, your piping, which does play a role in the actual power output, by the way, as well as any other additional parts, such as injectors or intake manifolds and things like that, that might come into play based on the type of system that you're looking at buying. So our goal here now is to go ahead and pick the right system for you based on the differences of these systems. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but you kind of look at these systems independently of one another, and then you can judge which system is right for me. So the first system we're going to talk about would be the uh, positive displacement type blowers. People call them roots blowers. These are the types that sit on the intake manifold where it used to be. They take the place of the intake manifold typically. And so what will happen from there is as the air is drawn in, it's compressed and shot straight down into the engine, typically through an intercooler, which is also typically water to air. So that's the first type of system. It's usually used on the lower horsepower cars. Not that it can't be used on a full race version because we've seen plenty of really fast cars that way too. Uh, the next type of supercharger that you'll find would be centrifugal. Centrifugals are basically belt-driven turbochargers. They look like a snail on the front of the motor. Those are typically used in a little higher horsepower applications and more of the track type cars. And then the last type of forced induction would be your turbochargers, singles and twins. And we're going to get into detail on the actual turbo selection video on a little bit more of what each of those work in what particular application for. Okay, so let's go into picking the right system for you. Okay, so we have a couple of ways we're going about this. And we're going to pick a very simple approach, which, of, which is how much horsepower are you looking for at the wheels and what are you using the car for? Okay, so those are the two basic criteria that we would recommend you use when you start trying to pick the right system. Okay, so starting with our 300 horsepower at the wheel cars. If you're looking to make 300 at the wheels of force induction, you might consider changing your platform because that's kind of a bad goal. Unless you got some kind of uh, new hoverboard or something goofy and you're just trying to build the world's best hoverboard. I don't know, whatever. I'm just messing around. But we're going to start with 400 at the wheels as our first mark, okay? So we have two types of dynos that you typically find, load bearing, non-load bearing. For this example, we're going to use the Mustang dyno and the dyno jet in our analogies, okay? So let's say you want to make 400 horsepower to the wheels on a Mustang dyno or 450 to the wheels on a dyno jet, okay? If you're at that mark and that's your goal, that's what we would call a good performance mark for a good street car. A daily driver, a car that you can be happy with, that takes pump gas, gets you to work and back, not a whole lot of track duty. It's a nice, quick, fun car to have, okay? So that type of car, we have found most of the people opt for a roots or positive displacement type blower. And the reason being, the power production on that is immediate. So as soon as you go to full throttle, you get all the boost it can make, and then it holds it, and then it kind of drifts off on the top end. So that's the stoplight to stoplight kind of combo. It's real fun to drive. It doesn't make the most horsepower in the world, but it's a lot of fun. And that's most of your cars that make 400 to 450 at the wheels on a Mustang or a Dynojet. Now, uh, we do see guys doing the same thing with turbos and the same thing with centrifugals, but I'm just saying in general, if your mark is 400 to 450, you can go buy yourself an off-the-shelf kit, bolt it on on the weekend, and maybe with some light exhaust modifications, you'll be right at that point power-wise. You'll have a great daily driver on pump gas. And that's also typically six to eight pounds of boost. That's all you need. The engine lives a long time, and you have a great dri daily driver type combo. The next mark that we're going to talk about is going to be the 500 to 575 at the wheels. So 500 on a Mustang Dyno, 575 on a Dyno Jet, okay? That type of um, uh, combination is usually somebody with a real serious positive displacement blower, uh, lots of uh, pulley changes and things to spin it up, does make a lot more heat, so it's not quite as friendly as a daily driver we talked about before. 
but usually you find guys will either do that or go with a centrifugal blower. A centrifugal is a much more um, efficient way of making power just because of the design of the system. Uh, and that's not a hard fast rule, it's just what we see in general and what our customers, our performance shops are showing us is going on in the market. So you can use a centrifugal blower to make that kind of power. Now this is the type of car that can still be daily driven, however it's probably a little more serious track time. So the guy's trying to run tens with the car for example. That's the type of car that you would see with centrifugal uh, and they would typically run uh, between 8 and 10 pounds of boost. Now you can have the exact same kind of combo with a turbo. The downside is the packaging costs go up, okay? So with either types of blowers, they're typically cheaper to buy and bolt on and put them on on a weekend than you would with a turbo. With a turbo kit, usually you usually have some fitment issues, it's a lot more expensive, or you have a local shop, maybe fab you up an actual turbo kit. But that's not usually the type of guy at this level. Because at this level, you can do the same thing with a roots or a centrifugal blower without the headache of a turbo and the turbo install and, and all that stuff. Now, don't go send me hate mail about turbos, okay? I'm about as turbo positive guy as you're going to find. I love turbos more than any of the others all combined. I get it. I'm just saying in general, at this power level, you can get away with one of the other two types of superchargers in a cheaper, quicker, easier to put together fashion than the turbos. Okay, those are typically, like I said, 8 to 10, maybe 12 pounds of boost, just depending on how much power the motor makes before you start adding the forced induction. And that also leads us down a little bit of a bunny trail, because if you are looking down the road far enough, you realize that anybody can bolt this stuff on. But you got to kind of keep in mind, who's going to tune this? And is it you, or is it going to be one of your shop's tuners or whatnot? And that's all fine, but just keep in mind that that type of guy, he can be a good, uh, average but good tuner and still pretty well tune any of these types of combos we've talked about so far. But when you make the next step, okay, you go away from our average good tuner, who maybe has taken one of our level one courses or beginners or intermediate courses, to the advanced courses, which is going to be the crazier cars, which are making 600, 700 at the wheels. That kind of makes you pause for a minute and go, okay, I need to make sure that at the end of the day, when I've got this all built, I can, I can count on a tuner who's done this before. Because I don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars building this car and ending up with a bunch of parts on the floor. Okay, so that is the type of customer that has uh, got somebody in mind that can tune a car at this level we're talking about, which is six, seven hundred, eight hundred at the wheels to make a car go really fast. Now, also not a normal daily driver at this point. Can it be daily driven? Yes, and that's going to be internet debates for, for decades, I'm sure. But you're making that much power at the wheels, it's just not as friendly and as fun to drive as they normally are at 400 or 450. You could toss your buddy the keys in that car, he's probably not going to kill himself. But 800 horsepower, you got to be really careful with. So with that type of combo, that's almost never do we see that with roots type blowers. And I'm not saying it can't be done. Don't send the hate mail. It, I'm sure it's done. I'm just saying normally you'll see with that type of power level, it's just easier to do it with a centrifugal or a turbocharger. And usually at that point, they're moving towards turbos because of the efficiency of them. Um, so as uh, you're adding this power and this heat and you have bigger intercoolers and all these things, you're also moving away from pump gas friendliness. You can do a pump gas friendly build, but you usually need something like meth injection and or you can use E85 or race gas, those types of things with this power level of a combo. All right, so if you are building a car that you're making 600, 700, 800 at the wheels, you have a much more serious build going, you have probably got a centrifugal or maybe a really big roots or a turbo or two, that's the type of combo that really needs someone that's been through an advanced uh, training. Maybe they've been through one of our advanced learning home courses or one of our live seminars, or they've been certified by the tuning school. So we just recommend that you keep in mind the end result. Yes, you wanna make great power, but you want to make great safe power. You're not gonna get that with some guy who's experimenting with your car the first time around. All right, so to sum up that power level, those are typically guys at 12 pounds of boost and up, maybe 14, 18, 20 pounds of boost, not a daily driver friendly car, but if that's your goal, you need to seriously consider these types of combos, these types of systems, and don't go and buy one of these smaller kits and then try and spin them up real fast just because they can make the boost, okay? Yes, you can make as much boost as you want, but there is a point at which your little kit is gonna run out of power, it's not going to make efficient air, it's going to be hot, dirty air, and it's going to not make very good power. So we always recommend you consider where you wanna end up at, and you build your system so that you can get to that point in a good, safe, and consistent manner, and you don't end up with a pile of parts on the floor at the end. 
Now, uh, transitioning to the next video in our series, we're going to get into the details of how to actually pick the right turbo or supercharger for your end results that you want to see. So keep that in mind. Watch out for the next video. It'll be out next week.